to Appalachia's Homestead. I have gotten so many requests from you on how do I make my pinto beans or soup beans or mixed beans, 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 beans. So I'm going to take you through a simple guide video that you can follow so you can make the most delicious homemade beans. Something to make your granny super proud. Let's go. All right, guys, we're meeting your request today at Appalachia's Homestead, and I'm going to teach you how to make beans. Now, let me tell you something. I know we live in an instant world, and I know we live in a microwave bake it, and I do these things too, but there are certain things you cannot deny. If you want the best of the best, you have to be able to be patient and to be able to understand that there's just some things you can't cheat. And pinto beans or mixed beans are certainly one of those things. If you're going to throw it in a casserole or put it in another dish, it may not matter. But if you want it to be your main course, it is a slow and steady romantic process to make the best beans there are on the planet. Period. Now, my personal preference is to slow cook 18 to 24 hours a big old pot of beans in a large, large cast iron Dutch oven out on open flame. You cannot beat that. You have to finesse it though and you have to be there almost non-stop for that all day, possibly all night slow process. So in my personal opinion, if you want to get the closest you can to duplicate that with minimal stress, it's gonna be an old fashioned crock pot, period. Now my Nana will tell you she prefers to cook them on the stove top, but you know what? She babysits them all day. I can't babysit them all day. I got kids to babysit, I got chickens to babysit, and like you, we got things to do. So I'm telling you to go back old school. Get out your six or seven quart, 10, 12 year old crock pot, you know, the old school now, and use it, utilize it. There's so many wonderful recipes and ways you can still use your crock pot. And I'm telling you, your beans prove it. Now, I started this process 24 hours ago. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I did and how you can do it too. It's not hard, you just have to think a little bit ahead and work with it a little bit as you go. But it is the ultimate time saver. It catches you in a pinch. You can work any meal around it as we did growing up. Slap you some cornbread, maybe a little chow chow and some slice of onion. Slap your granny. Better, I better do a taste test here. Mm. Fine living right here, people. Okay, guys, before I tell you how to make these wonderful beans, we had to have a break in the video because we had to go to Knoxville for a doctor's appointment. So we had beans for lunch. Now that we're home, it's kind of low. I've got to go out and take care of my critters. We're in the teens. Got to take care of my babies. You understand that, break, and then we'll talk about the magic of these delicious beans and cornbread. Okay, enough's enough. Let's get to it already, lady. Okay, here's the deal. You're gonna pick out what beans you want to cook. Certain beans cook faster than others, which will help decide and determine how long you do this. My personal preference for white beans or pinto beans or a mix of the two is about 18 hours. So what that translates to is before, you gotta figure out when do you wanna eat these critters? Do you want them for lunch? I always try to get them soaking about 24 hours before I expect to eat them, which was lunchtime today for the first go around. So that's what I did is I chose my beans. I made a one pound combination of each, mixed them up, doesn't matter how, and then I soaked them. The reason you soak them is because it helps them to absorb the water pre-hand to cooking. It also kind of lets all the yunky, the yucky, funky stuff come on up and float to the top of the water, which you're gonna see there's gonna be that. You're gonna sort through them also. You might find that there's a rock. Uh, who knows? I mean, remember, these are processed. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna let them soak for a couple of hours, and then you're gonna rinse them. I like to rinse them twice. So you pour that water off, you rinse them, and then you let that water rise above it so anything rises up. 
pour that off again in the colander, wherever, and then you're going to rinse them again because things happen. At that point, you're gonna put them into your crock pot. Now, mine is a seven quart. I've had these for a very long time. They're continuing to work for me and work very well. So why would I change that? Why not? So I simply put them into the crock pot. At this point, you're looking se at several hours later. So total, I try to look at the whole process of being about 18 hours, roughly, give or take, okay? So I'm gonna put them in the crock pot. I'm gonna top them off with water. See, you've already soaked them, so they've absorbed and, uh, and have kind of, you know, they're kind of swollen up so that you don't have to worry about that quite as much in the cooking process because that's done for you in the pre-soak. So all I'm going to do is put them in the crock pot and cover them with water. Okay, now here's the secret. Depending on your preference of items, you can use different items to really help give flavor to your beans. This is what I do. If I know I'm gonna be baking a ham for holidays or for a dinner in the week, I will take several pieces that are either in the beginning or left over, depending on my stock in my freezer, and I'm gonna keep a little bit back because I know I'm gonna be cooking beans at some point, and this is what gives the flavor to it, people. Some people use a ham bone. Some people use ham. Some people use lard. Some people just use bouillon. Some people just use oil. My Nana cooks beans every which way but up and down, and she will tell you she's used them all. It's all about how you finesse it and are patient with the beans as they cook. You add salt and pepper. It's very, very simple. I love ham cooking in my beans. White beans, pinto beans, or the combination of the two. So that's what I'm gonna to recommend to you. So remember, anytime you're at the holiday dinner and there's ham leftovers, even if you're like, eh, nah, I'll pass. Grab you a couple of slices, put them in the freezer because a pot of beans are waiting on you. Now, before I go to bed, I come into the kitchen. They're already set on low. I do not cook my beans on high. Slow and steady wins the race. You're just gonna stir them real good, make sure that they look good. You need to add a little bit more water. What does it need? Check it out and then cover them and let them flow and go with the flow. In the morning when you wake up, you're gonna smell them and you're gonna know. Now, if it has a slight burnt scent to it, you better get in there and stir them beans up and add you some water real quick, but that wasn't the case here today. So they were perfect. So approximately, again, I'm looking at 24 hours total, very few steps in between, but 18 hours of real prime time cooking is what I think it takes in order to make the perfect pot of beans. The great thing about this is, depending on how you did it, you got dinner for tomorrow. You can make chili, white chicken chili. You can make a vegetable soup. You can do anything and everything because you've got a strong base built right there. Like I said, it could feed you quickly. Your family, depending on how big you fill that crock pot, you could feed your family two to four times off of that one mixture of beans. And if you need the perfect side item, don't forget the cornbread. It's a must have. I've got several videos on how to make different types of cornbread. It's an Appalachian staple. It's a staple for everybody. So definitely check that video out and learn how to make gorgeous cornbread. It makes it perfect. And like I said before, if you're getting a little bit crazy, don't forget the sliced onion, maybe pickled okra or chow chow. All right, ladies, it is that simple. It is the winning edge. It's the staple of all of our grannies. It's how the people of Appalachia have made it through and continue to press through with delicious meals, wholesome protein, and a lot of great memories. Who doesn't love the fact that you sat around with granny and you talked with her while you ate a big bowl of homemade beans and fresh cornbread? We appreciate you watching. We hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, you let us know. Tell me what's your favorite type of beans. There's so many, who can choose? We'll see you on the next video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Y'all stay warm out there and get those beans soaking for a next yummy meal.